Hello guys and welcome to a new video. This is going to be an advanced guide to trading. We will be going deeper into all the aspects related to trading. If you would like to start with the basics, then take a look at the video in the description. You can also find the aspects that we are going to talk about in the description with timestamps, so you can fast forward to the subject that you want to hear more about. And these are the aspects that we are going to talk about. Rules to trading. Procedures you can take before, during, and after trading, Stardust cost reduction for special trades, what use low level Pokemon have in trades, Pokemon that after trading don't need candies to evolve, your chances of getting a 100% Pokemon during a trade for each friendship level, lucky trades, lucky friend trades, and the medals. Rules to trading. When you are trading you need to be in a 100 meter range with your friend. Whether you are standing next to that person is not necessarily important. That person could be on the 7th floor. As long as you are standing next to the building, you will be in range. Mythical Pokemon cannot be traded. This includes Pokemon like Mew, Celebi, Jirachi, Deoxys, Darkrai, Genesect, Victini, and many more to come in the future. Note that Melton is an exception to this rule, and while being a mythical, it can still be traded. While trading, it is not possible to receive a Pokemon that is of a higher level compared to your trainer level. If you try to make such a trade, then you will see a warning message appear. And if you continue with the trade, then the Pokemon level will go down to match the trainer's level. So if you are someone who would like to help the local community to get stronger Pokemon, then this is something to keep in mind. Now we're going to look into the rules for special trades and normal trades. Special trades have a limit of one per day and they reset at midnight. This means that you could do a special trade just before midnight and just after midnight. Normal trades have a limit of 100 per day and they reset on an hourly basis, a rolling hourly basis. I will give you an example of how this works. Let's say you started trading yesterday at 2 p.m. and you did 100 trades precisely and now today it is 2 p.m. again. When it, when it becomes one minute later, then the first trade that you did yesterday will go beyond the 24 hours, meaning that it will fall off the 100 trades that you did. So the 100 trades becomes 99 trades, and now you can do one more trade. Note that normal trades and special trades are counted separately, which means that you can in fact do 101 trades in total per day. Procedures you can take before trading. When you are trading with a friend, you would like to do it fast and you don't want to keep looking which Pokemon can be traded and which not. So what you can do is for every Pokemon that you want to trade in the future, give them a certain symbol. Personally, I always give a dollar symbol to every Pokemon that I want to trade away. Then the next time that you trade, you can just search for the dollar symbol and you can trade all of those Pokemon away. You don't need to think about it. You can also decide to give different kinds of symbols for different kinds of trading Pokemon. So let's say you have the Pokemon that you want to trade away the next time you meet someone. You give that the dollar symbol. But if you have, uh, let's say you have regional stored up that you want to save for a special uh, occasion, then you can give those a different symbol. Let's say you have hit lucky friends with someone. Now what you can do is text each other and already plan a trade. If the trade is already planned and you have given the nickname, you can give the nickname for that person's real life name. Then the next time you meet each other, you can do the trade really fast. This is especially handy if you meet each other on the road somewhere and you only have half a minute to communicate. Let's say you went on the internet to try and find a special kind of Pokemon, hoping to trade that with someone. Now you find someone uh, who is not in your friend list yet, but you are able to uh, make a deal on the trade. What I would advise is to, before trading, first uh, become friends and level up all the way till at Ultra Friends. Because once you reach Ultra Friends, then the Stardust cost will be significantly reduced. Procedures you can take during the trade. While trading, you can use search strings to find Pokemon more easily. As we've just discussed, you can use a symbol or a trainer name. But now let's say during the trade, you and your friend decide that you would like to get more candies from the trade. There is a search string that you can use in this case. Let's say you have a lot of Ryolu, and some of those are from your neighborhood, and some of those are from far away, uh, Alolan X, for example. If you search for Ryolu and distance 100 or more, 
then you will only show the Riolu that are from that far away. Now assuming that your friend is trading Pokemon from the neighborhood, you will be able to get three candies per trade. Of course, you can also use the search string Riolu and distance 10 or more. This will enable you to get at least two candies. While trading, making good use of the sorting options can help a lot. Let's say you are trading and you decide that you want to uh, make a shiny trade, but you haven't decided upon which shiny it is going to be. Now, you can use the search string shiny, of course, but if you search by Pokedex number instead of recent, it's going to be much easier to give you an overview of what kind of shinies each of you have. While trading, there's also a way to make sure that you do not keep clicking on Pokemon that are already traded. You can use a search string called uh, exclamation mark traded. This will show all of the Pokemon that you have not received from a trade. And in the case of Riolu, you can use a search string called exclamation mark traded and Riolu. Now you know for a fact that all of these Riolu can be traded away. Procedures you can take after trading. Let's say you just finished a long trading session and you want to get rid of the bad IV Pokemon. Now, the easiest way to do this is to go to recent. But let's say you were also using a Go Plus and you caught a good amount of Pokemon and some of those Pokemon you want to use for a trading session later. Now, if you want to exclude the Pokemon that you just traded, then you can use the search string traded. This will show you all the Pokemon that you have just received from a trade. Of course, you can combine traded with the search string zero star, one star, and two star. So you will only see the bad IV ones. Using these search strings will make it very easy for you to see which Pokemon can be thrown away quickly so you have more space to catch Pokemon with the Go Plus at that moment. Stardust costs for special trades. When it comes to Stardust costs, then we're not going to pay attention to normal trades and special trades because I'm sure that many people already know how much these cost. But we are going to talk about expensive special trades. I call these double special trades. For a trade to be counted as a double special trade, it requires two conditions. The first condition is that a Pokemon that you are receiving from a trade is a new Pokemon species in your Pokedex or a new variant of a Pokemon for your Pokedex. When I'm talking about variants, then I mean with Pokemon like Unown and Spinda, they have all sorts of different versions. If you are receiving an Unown letter that you don't have yet, it will count as a new Pokemon species for your Pokedex even if you already had an Unown, but a different letter. If you are receiving a new shiny Pokemon, this will also count as a new Pokemon for your Pokedex, even if you had a regular version of the Pokemon already. The second condition is that the Pokemon must be either shiny or a legendary, or both. If a trainer is receiving a Pokemon with both of these conditions, then it will count as a double special trait. These double special traits cost a whopping 1 million for good friends, 800,000 Stardust for Great Friends, 80,000 Stardust for Ultra Friends, and 40,000 Stardust for Best Friends. The most important thing to note here is the huge decline in cost going from Great Friends to Ultra Friends, from 800,000 to 80,000, a 90% discount. This is why I am saying that it's better when you have planned a trade with someone to reach Ultra Friends first. The use of low level Pokemon. Although it's preferable to use a high level Pokemon when trading, because it will save you a lot of Stardust, it does not mean that low level Pokemon are useless. Many people would throw away their 20 CP Larvitars for example, but what happens when it becomes lucky? Now in normal circumstances a level 1 Pokemon will take 270,000 Stardust to max out. But if it becomes lucky that gets halved to 135,000 Stardust which sounds a lot better already. Now if we take into consideration that using 135,000 Stardust to max out a level 1 Lucky Pokemon is the same as 130,000 being used to max out a le level 31 normal Pokemon, then you can see that it can still be very useful to use these low level Pokemon. Another reason why low level Pokemon can still be useful is for the people that are trying to get a Lucky Dex. If you want to get the lucky decks for a certain Pokemon species, then it doesn't matter what level Pokemon you are receiving. I'm sure you know this, but make sure you make it clear to the people you are trading with so that they save these Pokemon for you. Pokemon that after trading don't need candies to evolve. There's a couple of Pokemon out there that once you receive them from a trade, you don't need candies to evolve them. 
This rule applies to the following Pokémon. Kadabra, Machoke, Graveler, Haunter, Boulder, Girder, Cataplast, and Shelmet. Note that if you use a pre-evolution of these Pokémon, the trick still works. So let's say you use a Machop, and you trade a Machop with each other, then you will need to pay the 25 candies to evolve it into Machoke, but after that you can evolve it for free to Machamp. There is a search string so you can find these Pokémon more quickly. It is called Trade Evolve, and it will show you all of the Pokémon that after evolution do not require candies to evolve. The only downside of this search string is that it does not work for the pre-evolutions. So for example, it would show all of your Machoke, but it does not show your Machoke. The chance of getting a 100% Pokémon from trades depending on your friendship level. When you are trading with someone, then the higher the friendship level between the two of you is, the higher the chance you will find a 100% Pokémon. If you do not have a friendship level yet with someone, then the minimum IVs of a Pokémon you receive from a trade are 0, 0, 0. So your range will be 0 to 15 for every IV stat. This range of 0 to 15 results in a chance of 1 in 4096 of getting a 100% Pokémon. Once you reach good friends, then the minimum IV stats become 111, so a range from 1 to 15 for every stat, and this results in a chance of 1 in 3375 of getting a 100% Pokémon. For great friends, the minimum IVs become 222, so a range of 2 to 15, and this results in a chance of 1 in 2744. For ultra friends, the minimum IVs become 333, so a range of 3 to 15, and this gives you a chance of 1 in 2197 of getting a 100%. And then finally, for best friends, the minimum IVs become 555, so a range of 5 to 15, and this results in a chance of 1 in 1331. As you can see, your chances become over 3 times as good when trading with a best friend compared to trading with someone with whom you have no friendship status. Lucky Trades The chance of getting a lucky trade is 1 in 20. However, the older the Pokémon gets, the higher the chance of getting a lucky trade. Based on the Silph Road, these are your chances of getting a lucky trade depending on the age of your Pokémon. So if your Pokémon is less than 1 year old, your chances will be 1 in 20, 5%. If one of the Pokémon is at least 1 year old, then the chances become 1 in 10, 10%. If one of the Pokémon is at least 2 years old, then your chances become 25%, or 1 in 4. And if you are trading a Pokémon from July or August 2016, then you have a 3 in 4, or 75% chance of getting a lucky trade out of it. The Silph Road has also checked if trading old Pokémon to old Pokémon will give you a multiplier, but they were unable to get enough information to confirm this. The Silph Road looked at how many days old Pokémon is for the research, instead of which year they come from. For example, in January 2020, a Pokémon from December 2019 will show a tag of 2019. But that does not mean that it is one year old. The Silph Road will look at the amount of days that it is old, and they will come to the conclusion that it is obviously not one year old in days. So make sure to not become confused by that. When you do reach a lucky trade, then both Pokémon become lucky, and they will have minimum stats of 12, 12, 12, meaning a range of 12 in 15, which results in a whopping chance of 1 in 64 of getting a 100% out of it. There is a guaranteed way to get a lucky trade by using Pokémon from July 2016 and August 2016. Next to me you will see an infographic displaying when this will work and when not. At least one of the trainers must apply to both of the rules in the infographic. Rule 1 is that the trainer is trading away a Pokémon from July or August 2016. Notice that I use the word away, not receive. You must trade the Pokémon away. And the rule 2 is that this person who is trading the Pokémon away has done less than 10 guaranteed lucky trades. Here, notice the word guaranteed. So if you by accident get a lucky trade by using recent Pokémon, this is not a guaranteed lucky trade. Only if one person applies to both rules will this trick work. 
And of course, if both players apply to this rule, it will also work. So we know that doing normal trades with recent Pokemon and uh, getting a Lucky Trade out of it does not count towards the guaranteed Lucky Trades. However, uh, if we look at Lucky Friends trades, then it becomes a little bit more tricky. Because a Lucky Friends trade is not using July or August 2016 Pokemon. So in this case, it does not apply to that system. But it is a guaranteed Lucky. So researchers have until now uh, not been able to say whether this affects your guaranteed Luckies or not. So it is unclear if Lucky Friends trades count towards your guaranteed trades for this trick. Lucky Friends trades. So we've already discussed the ranges for each friendship level and the fact that a Lucky trade will have a range of 12 to 15 for a chance of 1 in 64 at a 100%. Now what makes a Lucky Friends trade even better is that it is a guaranteed Lucky trade. And this means that you can use any Pokemon you would like for a guaranteed good IP Pokemon with reduced Stardust costs. Even though the odds of becoming Lucky Friends is only 1 in 50, the rewards are so incredibly good that it is worth all the effort. There are many options you can use for Lucky Friend trades. One of my personal favorites is Shinies. It is not easy to find a good IV Shiny in the wild. However, you know that when doing a Lucky Friends trade, the IVs are going to be at least 80%, and this is really your best chance of getting a good IV shiny Pokemon. You can also use a Lucky Friends trade for really rare Pokemon. Think of something like Spiritomb or Shadinia. Especially for the people who are going for a Lucky Dex, this is a must-use opportunity. You can also decide to trade a regional. Again, for the people using a Lucky Dex, this is a perfect opportunity to get one more Lucky in your Dex. And at the same time, it's a great opportunity to try and get a good IV. For example, if I want to get a Heracross, it is not a native to my area, but I know for a fact that if I receive it from a Lucky Trade, that I will have a good one. You can also use Pokemon that are slightly less rare, but still pretty rare, like Gibble or Timber. For Timber, an extra benefit is that you don't need to use an extra 200 candies to evolve it to the last stage. Another type of rare Pokemon that you can trade is Legacy Pokemon. I am talking about Pokemon with legacy moves. Let's say you want to receive such a Pokemon and you want them with high IVs, then this is a perfect opportunity to use a Lucky Friends trade. If, however, you are searching for good PvP IVs, then doing a Lucky Friend trade will not be your best option because the attack will become at least 12. And for good PvP IVs, you are usually searching for 0 attack and 15 HP and 15 defense. The last option I would like to mention for Lucky Friends trades are Pokemon that are meta-relevant, but not necessarily rare. But you can use, for example, a level 35 Larvitar. Now, once you trade these Larvitars with each other, then you only need to use 44,000 Stardust to max out this Pokemon. Okay, so previously we talked about the fact that your chances are 1 in 64 of getting a 100% Pokemon out of a Lucky Friends trade. But now we are going to look at what the chances are of getting a 100% Pokemon after a certain amount of Lucky Friend trades. Once you have done 44 Lucky Friend trades, then there is a 50% chance that one of them became 100%. Once you have done 88 Lucky Friend trades, then you have a 75% chance that one of those Pokemon became 100%. For 146 trades, the chance becomes 90%. For 190 trades, your chance becomes 95%. And after 292 of Lucky Friend trades, you will have a 99% chance that one of them became a 100% Pokemon. Now we are going to talk about the medals. The Pilot Medal requires 1 million distance for gold, and the Gentleman Medal requires 1000 trades to get it to gold. The best way to get the Pilot Medal to gold is by using Pokemon from far away, which is either from a holiday location or from a Lonen Axe. Both medals do not give close rewards. However, there are other medals that are influenced by the trading system. Trading affects the Collector Badge. For every Pokemon that you have received from a trade, this will also count towards your Collector Badge. So let's say that you want to know precisely how many Pokemon you have caught yourself, then you will need to deduct your Gentleman Badge from your Collector Badge. The type medals at the bottom of your screen are also affected, meaning uh, how many Pokemon you have caught of each species, grass, berry, steel, you name it. And the last three medals that are affected are the ones for the Rotata, the Magikarp, and the Pikachu medal. For the Rotata medal, if people send you extra small Rotata variants, then every small Rotata that you have received from a trade will also count towards your Rotata medal badge. 
The same applies to Magikarp, but then with extra large Magikarp variants. And when it comes to the Pikachu badge, then every Pikachu you receive from a trade will count towards the Pikachu badge. If you are struggling to get any of these medals to gold, then ask your friends to save up some of these Pokemon so you can work on the badges. Now I would like to note that there is a global ranking system. And in this ranking system, uh, for every medal, the top players are listed. Now there are people who are using this trading trick to try and get the highest medal as possible. So for example, if we look at the Pikachu medal, then there are people who are constantly getting Pikachus from trades to try and get the highest number possible. So they are number one in this medal on the global ranking. And finally, yes, every variant of Pikachu counts towards this medal. It doesn't matter which kind of hat it is wearing. This concludes this guide. If you like these kind of videos, then thumbs up. If you would like to see more of these videos, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.